I am really thrilled to be creating another Colorwork stocking. I think they are so much fun, and this Prancing Deer is absolutely adorable. Of course, I love using City Tweed. It really creates a rustic and classic look for these stockings. I will be using City Tweed in the DK weight. This is 123 yards per 50 grams. I'll be using the color Snowbank as well as the red is called Blue Blood, which can be confusing. I know it says Blue Blood, but it's the, the dark red tone as well as Orca. I will also be using a size G four millimeter hook. You'll need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends, a stitch marker because a lot of this is worked continuously in the round, and then scissors. And then also, if you like, I found this strip of leather from Joann's. I've been using it on a lot of my stockings. I simply cut a piece and punch a hole and I attach it to the top of my stocking as, as the, the loop hook holder. If you don't want to use leather, we can simply do an I cord or single crochet in rows, whatever you prefer. So let's go ahead and get started with this Prancing Deer Colorwork Christmas stocking. Now this stocking will be worked from toe up. So we're gonna start with the toe, work our way up. We're gonna do an afterthought heel, which means we're gonna skip some space for the heel and work it last. And then we'll work it all the way to the top cuff ribbing. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the City Tweed in Snowbank. This is the color I will be using for the toe of my stocking. So I have labeled my colors as the Snowbank or white is color A. The red is the color B and that darker gray is the color C. So in the pattern, whenever you see A, you're going to be working this color. We're going to start by making a magic ring and then we are going to work eight single crochet stitches into that magic ring. So I'll work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now I don't like to close my ring all the way after doing the first round. I like to leave a bit of space. I find it a bit easier to be able to get into the uh, next round, especially where we're not joining. Now for round two, we are going to be working two single crochet stitches into each stitch around. So that means we're going to be increasing from eight stitches to 16 stitches. I'm going to go right into this first stitch and I'm going to do two single crochet stitches. But since we're working continuously and not joining, you are always, always going to want to mark the first stitch in the round. It is so hard to keep track of your, your beginning stitch of the round when you're working continuously. So grab that stitch marker and get very friendly with it. So now I'm just going to keep doing two single crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around. Now after round two, I like, then I like to go ahead and pull that magic ring closed. You can weave in your end if you would like. And then for round three, we are not doing any increasing. We're simply going to move that stitch marker up and then we are going to be working one single crochet stitch into each stitch around. So I'll start the first stitch by just doing a single crochet. Go ahead and place that stitch marker and then single crochet into each stitch around, not changing the stitch count. It is still 16 stitches. Now for round four, I'm simply going to go ahead and move that stitch marker up. And we are going to be doing two single crochet stitches into the first stitch. So round four is increasing again. And then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. Those so this will increase by eight stitches. So we're doing two single crochet stitches and then single crochet into the next. And at the end of the round, we will have increased from 16 stitches to 24 stitches. And then for round five, so for the odd rounds, we'll simply be single crocheting into each stitch around. So after you complete round four, do one round, round five of single crochet stitches without increasing. Now for round six, we'll move our stitch marker for a second and we will do two single crochet stitches into the first stitch and then mark the first stitch of that round. All right, so for round six, now we are going to single crochet into each of the next two stitches. So our repeat will be two single crochets into the next and then single crochet into each of the next two. 
This once again will increase by eight stitches. So at the end of round six, you will have 32 stitches. And for round seven, we will simply single crochet into each stitch around. Now for round eight, we will do two single crochet stitches into the first stitch and be sure to mark the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And that's our repeat around for round eight. So two single crochet in the next and then single crochet in each of the next three stitches. This will increase our stitch count to 40 stitches for this round. And then for the next round, we will work one round just simply single crocheting in each stitch around. And now for round 10, we are going to do two single crochet stitches into the first stitch and mark the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And that's our repeat around. So we're going to want to do two single crochet stitches and then single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And this will increase our stitch count to 48 stitches after round 10. And then for round 11, simply work in each stitch single crocheting around. Now for round 12, this will be our last increasing round. We're going to start by doing two single crochet stitches into the first stitch, marking the first stitch in the round, and then we're going to single crochet into the next five stitches. This will bring our stitch count to 56 stitches, which most of the rounds we have throughout the rest of the stocking will keep the same stitch count. We're going to have a 56 stitch, 56 stitch stitch count. So for this round, we're going to do two single crochet stitches and then single crochet into the each of the next five stitches. And that's the repeat that will bring us to 56 stitches. Now for round 13, we are going to single crochet around, but I'm going to come back for that round for a few tips. Now for round 13, we are going to be single crocheting into each stitch around and marking the first stitch of the round. But I want to note when we start the very next round after this, we're going to start to work in our color work and our color work will be worked in split single crochets. Now when we're working in split single crochets, the row that we work below will need to have a little bit of a different tension than our regular single crochet stitches. And what I mean by that is when you work around 13 and you insert your hook into the stitch, you yarn over and you pull up a loop, pull just a bit slightly more, and that will give a larger V on the front, which we'll be working into on the next round. So it's just a way to make it a little bit easier on the next round by slightly changing uh, our, our loop that we pull up on this round. So when we pull that loop up just a little bit more, it gives us more height to that V. Now that we have the toe of our stocking done, it's time for us to work on the foot portion. Now the foot and the heel will all be worked in split single crochet stitches from here on out, and we're going to start bringing in other colors. But before we get started on this, I want to take a second and talk about the chart. This is the chart for the foot. It is worked from bottom to top. So we'll start down here with round one, and it'll be worked from bottom. Then round two will be worked from bottom to top. And we will always work it from right to left. Now you can see that this isn't enough stitches for the entire round. So we, we will be working each of these sections four times. So you'll go ahead and work for round one. We'll work across here and then we'll do it again for two, three, and then four times. So each chart will repeat. And then each of these stitches, when we work them, we might have an area like this where we have five stitches in a row. That's where right here we would go ahead and we would catch the loop on the back, the, the floating on the back, so that it doesn't have a tight tension and our color work lays nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to work this color work section and what to do if you need to carry your yarn. So for round one of this color work section, and yes, we still will want to keep that stitch marker close because we have um, a continuous round still going. We need to know where the beginning of our round is. Whenever I change colors, what I like to do is I like to go back to the, the stitch before where I need to change colors. And I'm going to back it up just a bit right before I do that last yarn over. And I'm actually gonna pull my new color through and that way as I complete that last stitch, I'm ready with a new color to work in my next stitch. 
So for this round, we're going to be working it in split single crochets. And what that means is we're going to enter between the V's. So not up here where we normally do, but right in the center of that V. And on the back, if we look, there's an upside down V that our hook should be coming through as well. Then we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. And once again, we want to pull this loop up a bit higher than we normally do. So it's easy to work into. You should not have a ton of resistance when you're working the stitch. If you do, your tension's probably tight and that culprit is probably this loop. Then we're gonna yarn over and complete our first split single crochet. And we're going to work split single crochets all the way around for this round and even the next round. So what I wanna do is I wanna talk though about color work. I'm not working from the chart at this point. I'm just going to show you an example that let's say now I was going to go back to working my white. However, if I were to do that right now, that flow along the back, if I were to grab my white, that would carry for a really long stretch. We don't want that. I'd say no more than three stitches. We definitely don't wanna carry across four or five stitches because often if we don't have our tension right, we can pull too tight and then it really messes with the, the lay of the fabric on the front. So if I were to do this, let's say I had to work five stitches in one color and then I'm going to switch colors. So I know I'm working five stitches. So at about the third stitch, I'll lay the color that I'm floating on the back. So the color I'm not using currently across my hook. And then I'm going to complete this stitch. And what that does is it catches the yarn on the back. So that way when we're continuing to work, it's following us much closer and our floats are much less. Then if I'm going to change colors, I'm going to, to change my color as I complete the previous stitch. And that way I'm ready to work the new color into the next stitch. And then if I were working a lot of stitches again, I would grab the yarn that is needing to be carried and about every third stitch or so, we're gonna wanna catch that to make sure that this float isn't too tight and it doesn't mess with the fabric on the front of our um, stocking. So continue to work this up, either following the written instructions or the color work instructions through the foot. And then we'll talk about what to do for the heel because after the foot, we will split for the heel and enjoy working up the color work. It's going to take a bit longer it might be a little bit slower, but definitely enjoy the process because it's really, really fun to watch the color patterns work up. So this is round 18 of this foot part of the color work. So I just want to review a couple more things now that we can kind of see how this works up and where we're headed. So for this round, my first stitch was the color A, and then the next five are the color C or the red. So I will work those except when I get to this one, which is halfway. So this is my third single crochet in this color. I'm going to lay my color A over my hook and then finish this stitch and then continue with the next two. And remember, every single time we go to change to a new color, we're going to stop on the stitch right before we're, where we want to change and yarn over with that new color. And that makes it ready for us to work in that next stitch. If we take a look at the inside here, because I know most people like to see, well, what does the inside look like? It looks messy, but it actually looks quite nice. We don't have any long traveling strands that would catch on things we were to put inside the stocking. And our, our floats are really, really nice. And that also helps the fabric on the outside to look really nice as well. We, we have a nice flexible fabric. We don't have any puckering. We don't have any long floats on the back. It is a skill. It can take a little bit of time in order to get the color work working in a right gauge. So feel free to do a few rows, undo them and try again. Don't get too frustrated with color work. It just takes a little bit of practice, a practice and then one day it will feel really easy. So now for round 27. Now this is the round that will create the heel split. So we're going to be creating a hole for the heel and we'll come back and work it later. We don't need anything but our color A right now, but I'm just letting my color B sit because I will be picking that up again soon. So for round 27, I'm going to start by doing the first 17 stitches in a split single crochet. Now 
Next, we are going to chain 22 and then skip 22 stitches. So we'll go ahead and skip 22 stitches. So we chain 22, we skip 22. We have this funny looking hole. It makes sense later. And then we're going to split single crochet into the remaining stitches in this round, which are 17 stitches. Now for round 28, we are going to be working split single crochets into each stitch around. So this is just another solid round of color A, but I will mention the thing that's different for this round is that we have all those chain stitches over there. So what we do when we get to those chain stitches is we will simply single crochet into those. So as I get to these chain stitches, I'll simply single crochet into each chain stitch across and then work the remaining stitches as split single crochet. This also sets us up for the next round where we can work these single crochet stitches as split single crochet on the next round. So now we have our heel over here and it's time for us to go ahead and work that leg part of the stocking continuing around all these stitches. And for the leg chart, we only repeat it twice since it's such a wide chart. You're only repeating that chart twice versus repeating this section four times down here. And you're using all the same skills and tools you learned down here, to continuing that color work up the leg of the stocking for those rounds. So work this part up and come on back when you have that color work worked up. And I will mention this is a really fun part. So enjoy watching this image work up through each stitch. Now, after working up the leg portion of this, you might find that there's some slant. Don't worry too much about it. We can go ahead and block it so that your deer will sit nice centered on the front of your stocking. So the next thing we will do is we want to make a cute ribbed cuff up top here. So to do that, I sometimes like to slip stitch into the next stitch just to kind of even this out. Since we're changing what we're doing here, we're no longer working in these split single crochets. And then I will chain 17 stitches. I'm still using the size G hook. There's no need to go down a hook size for this since we don't need the cuff to be worn. Normally when we're wearing a cuff, we might go down hook size, but for this, I'm sticking with size G and chaining 17. After chaining 17, we are going to do a single crochet stitch into the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So you're going to be doing a total of 16 single crochet stitches across this chain. Now, as we get back to the body portion of the stocking, so the top of the foot portion, we are going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. and then turn our work. And if you want, when you're turning your work on your lap, you can always set this in a bowl, a really nice shallow, shallow bowl, and you can turn the bowl as you're rotating your thing. That way you don't have to like keep picking up. It's just easier to rotate if you set this inside of a bowl and it will spin really easily on your lap. Now I'm going to be skipping the two slip stitches we just did from the edge. And in the back loop only, we are going to single crochet 15. The reason why is when we get to our 16th stitch, I don't want to work it in the back loop only. I want to work it through both loops. So single crochet in the back loop only for 15 stitches. And now as we come to our final stitch, we'll single crochet a normal single crochet stitch through both of the loops. It just makes a nicer edge. And now we're ready to rotate our work again. Now for this next row, we're going to single crochet through both loops of the first stitch. I didn't chain one because it's not really necessary, but if you would like to chain one, you can. It can be omitted or not. Then through the back loops only, I want to single crochet the remaining 15 stitches. And as we get back to the top of the stocking, we will once again slip stitch two stitches from the top edge of the stocking and then rotate. We'll be repeating those last two rows. So skipping the two slip stitches, 
working in the back loops only until the last stitch, working through both loops of the last stitch, turning, working the first stitch through both loops, and then in the back loops back down to the stocking edge. Repeat those two rows all the way around and then come back and I'll show you how to join your starting edge with your last edge. Now that we've worked all the way around, it's time for us to join our current row with our first row. So to do this, we're going to insert into the first stitch through both loops and then grab the loop from the first row and slip stitch all of that together. And then in the next stitch, we'll go through the back loop only, grab the loop from the first row and slip stitch it together. And we'll continue to do that for each stitch all the way down this opening so that it is slip stitched together and we have our nice cuff. After slip stitching all the way down, we can go ahead and fasten off and weave in that end. And we have a nice fold over cuff for the top of our stocking. Now our last step is to work this heel. This is an afterthought heel for crochet. So we're gonna come back to that. We are going to be working this in single crochet stitches. So what we will do is we will join our yarn to one stitch along the corner. So our first stitch at the corner and go ahead and join your yarn with a slip stitch. And now we are going to single crochet around every single stitch around this opening. So we're gonna be working the bottom stitches then the top stitches. Now what this will do is it will leave holes on the corners. You can either use your tail end to come back and weave those in later, or as I get to this corner, I'm gonna show you a little trick if you don't wanna to have to come back and fix those holes later. Now that I've worked all the stitches along the bottom to the corner, I would be turning it and working the first stitch along the top. But that does leave, you can tell, it will leave a hole. Now, once again, no worries. You can weave this in with your tail end on the inside later. Or you can do basically a single crochet two together. So you're going to just catch some strands, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then enter your very first stitch along the other side of this heel opening. And then yarn over and go through all the loops on the hook. So you notice that that... It's like working a single crochet two together. We're not adding stitches, we're not decreasing stitches. We're just grabbing some loops, working it almost as a, a single crochet two together, but it closes any hole you would have on the corner. So now I'm going to work across this other side of the heel opening, and I'll do the same thing when I get back to this side. Now, after working a single crochet round, it's time for us to start decreasing, but we are not going to be joining at the beginning of each round. So we're gonna be working this continuously, which is why it's a great idea to grab a stitch marker. So what we will do for these first two stitches is we are going to single crochet them together and then mark them. And then we will single crochet into the next nine stitches. And then we're going to repeat that around until we get to the end of the round. So we'll single crochet two stitches together and then single crochet nine and repeat that around. And now for round three of the heel, we are going to start by single crocheting two together. And then we will single crochet into the next eight stitches and then repeat that around. So that single crochet two together, single crochet in the next eight. And now for round four, we're going to single crochet two together and then single crochet in the next seven stitches. And you'll repeat that around. So that single crochet two together, single crochet in the next seven stitches, repeating that around. And now for round five, we're continuing the same style of decrease. So we'll single crochet two together and then we will single crochet into the next six stitches and we will repeat that around until the end of this round. So single crochet two together, single crochet in the next six stitches. 
And now for round six, we'll single crochet in the first two stitches and then single crochet into the next five stitches and repeat that around. So that single crochet in the first two stitches, then single crochet five and repeat that around. And for round seven, we're going to single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next four stitches and repeat that around. At this point, we have we will have decreased to 20 stitches at the end of round seven. We've been decreasing four stitches per round. So for round seven, you'll single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next four stitches. Now round eight is our last round here. And for round eight, we are going to do a single crochet two together all the way around. So we're decreasing from 20 stitches to 10. So we'll simply single crochet two stitches together until you go all the way around and you'll have a total of 10 stitches at the end of this round. Now, after the end of round eight, we can go ahead and remove our stitch marker and fasten off and pull our yarn through. And we still obviously have a hole that we do not want to leave. We want to close this hole. So grab your yarn needle and we're going to go ahead and close this hole with that. Now, as we look at this hole, this opening that we have, we want to loop through the front loop of all 10 stitches around. So we're just going to go through the front loop only, weaving through all 10 stitches around. Now, once we've gone through all 10 stitches, we can simply pull that and it closes that hole. Now, whenever I do it this way, sometimes I'll notice there might be a few more gaps on the bottom of this round. So sometimes I'll just take my needle, loop through and do it again, but then go around the round below, and just gently tug that one too, so that it, it closes any of those gaps in between those rounds. And then you can fasten off and weave in your ends. Now you may find your stocking has a bit of lean to it. In crochet, stitches tend to lean one way, especially when we're working in the round. So you could go ahead and do a light blocking. I highly recommend that before putting on any type of I-cord or tab because you wanna make sure that it is lined up along the side of the stocking. And if your stocking has a lot of lean, in the end, it might end up being in the wrong spot. So after doing either a steam blocking or a light spray blocking, I do not recommend doing a total wet blocking for this one, only because I do find that the red color will bleed a little if you do a full wet block. So now it's time to go ahead and put on a tab. If you don't have a leather strip and you don't wanna do it this way, because I did have to have a leather punch to punch these holes out here, um, you can also do an I-cord or simply a crochet tab. And I have a tutorial for the I-cord on my blog and linked in the pattern. For this one, I am going to be doing this leather strip that I have these nice holes into. And so I'm simply going to place this along the side. And then I'm going to grab my yarn needle and I'm going to stitch this to the side. Now you have a gorgeous colorwork stocking to hang in your home around the holidays. I also wanted to mention I have a polar bear one that's kind of a matching set going on here that I did. And I also did a longer cuff on this. I'll have the stitches for that written in the pattern as well if you want a bit of a taller cuff. And I love this leather detail, but an eye cord works just as well. Thank you so much for joining me for this really fun colorwork holiday project. Please hit that subscribe button and I can't wait to work with you again soon.